Hello once again and thank you for joining me on the Waters and Stanton video channel. A couple of news items. The first one, MFJ. You probably know that MFJ ceased production about a year ago. Well, we've done a deal. We've now got a whole load of MFJ items with a 15% discount across the board. This lasts throughout the whole of May. So it's your chance to pick up some interesting MFJ items. You know, MFJ were the leaders in antenna matching units and also in antenna analyzers. Now, other firms came along uh, later and produced um, antenna analyzers, but MFJ were the first ones to introduce the, MF, the uh, antenna analyzer. Anyway, take a look on their website. There's some interesting items. These items won't be around for too long, and it'll be your last time to purchase them. So MFJ items, across the board, 15% discount whilst we've got them in stock. Go on our website, check it out. The other news is the Yaesu FTX One uh, F. Now I was a bit puzzled about the F at the end of the uh, title or the code, but F st seems to stand for field. The Yosu FTX 1F is the 10 watt field transceiver. It covers 160 meters through to 70 sems and it offers 10 watts output. In other words, it's a sort of a basic um, uh, sort of portable transceiver. But the reason they gave the F at the end is because it's now going to be known as the field. The field will be the low power version, 10 watts maximum, if you use an external supply. What did surprise me was the battery they are supplying. Although it's listed as an accessory, in the main spec they say this battery is supplied as standard. And it's a 6.4 amp hour, 10.6 volt battery. That's huge. That's much, much larger than the standard battery supplied with the IC705. And a quick calculation will show that that sort of battery is capable of lasting all day. So uh, that is uh, something that uh, is uh, very um, interesting about this transceiver. Um, in terms of its power capability or the length it can generate power, it's going to be quite, uh, quite, a, quite a day, at least I would say. Inevitably, there's going to be some comparisons with the IC705, and as regards dimensions, the Yaesu FTX-1F is just a few millimetres taller and wider than the IC705. Um, very small difference, but there is a significant difference in the depth. The depth of the Yaesu radio doesn't appear to be as deep as the IC705, which actually is quite deep. Although, to be fair, Yesu don't make it clear whether these dimensions for the depth include or exclude the clip-on battery on the back. And whilst we're talking about attaching things to the back of the radio, there is uh, an optional ultra-antenna tuner, which actually clips on the back of the radio or on the back of the battery pack, if you there's two tuners, one has got a space and one hasn't. So you can actually clip the ATU on the back of the radio, and that will handle both coax and uh, N-fed wires. And there's also an optional fan unit for when you use an external power supply when you're running, say, 10 watts, and you're running data or FM then you can have this optional fan that clips on the back in order to keep the temperature at a reasonable level. Now the architecture of this radio seems to follow the FTDX series. It's got a superhet front end. The front end is a conventional superhet and then it converts down to SDR. And this is uh, something that uh, Yesu have developed quite successfully. Um, the front end of the FTDX DX series is very, very good indeed, and it's got some very elaborate bandpass filtering in it, and they've uh, employed this same architecture 
in the uh, is in this FTX uh, transceiver. So I think we can be sure that the front end is going to be very very good indeed. Now the big surprise seems to be the FTX One Optima because that is the 100 watt version. Basically it's a clip on 100 watt amplifier with as far as I can see a built in antenna tuner. And this converts the FTX One F or the FTX One Field as they now seem to be calling it. That converts that into a 100 watt transceiver. So you've got two models. You've got the FTX One Field, which is capable of up to 10 watts if you use an external power supply, but includes the battery pack. Or you've got the FTX One Optima, which gives you 100 watts, and that includes both the battery pack and the 100 watt amplifier with built in antenna tuner unit. Now the FTX One Optima will give you 100 watts on all HF bands, including 6 meters. Uh, above that, it seems to give you, uh, seems to be reduced to 50 watts now. I assume it's 50 watts on 4 meters as well. So uh, anything above 6 meters, the power output is 50 watts. But bear in mind, you can reduce that power level. Um, I think to 50 milliwatts, they claim 50 milliwatts on the HF band. So if you want to run QRP on the VHF bands, yes, you can do. It's also got general coverage receive from 30 kilo, kilohertz to 174 megahertz. That means to say that it covers the uh, long wave, medium wave bands. Uh, it also covers a complete short wave spectrum. Um, it would cover the airband, I assume that uh, you can have AM airband uh, receive, and of course it covers the marine band as well. So some interesting sidelines side there, and of course also the FM broadcast band. Uh, as far as power consumption is concerned, on uh, 6 watts transmit it's 2.5 amps, and on 10 watts uh, it's 3 amps, on 100 watts it's 21 amps. These are uh, maximum power, peak power. Now we look at the front of the radio. The screen is identical to that on the IC705. And with these transceivers, there's always a little bit of a problem with the limited acreage on the front. And uh, on this particular uh, transceiver, apart from the controls that are actually on the front panel, there are controls along the top ledge of the front panel and these have dual functions and of course it's touch screen as well so i guess that uh, you need to learn your way of navigating around this transceiver to get the various options you need but that is inevitable with a transceiver of this compact size one feature that uh, you don't have on the ic705 is that it's dual receive you can have two receivers running at the same time and uh, if i read the spec right you could have one receiver running on the FM um, band or the uh, VHF SSB section and another receiver section running on the HF band. So it'd be handy to monitor perhaps your local repeater or whatever. And also they've included this uh, new DX receive mode uh, for FM. It means to say that uh, you get a form of noise reduction on the uh, VHF FM reception and it, they claim that you can work a bit more DX and it's really applying um, noise reduction to the FM section uh, on the VHF bands. What about FT8? Well, they've not only provided a fan that you can attach if you run it at the 10 watt level um, and the temperature is likely to rise. They've also put an FT8 preset mode on the transceiver. Now, this doesn't mean to say that it can decode FT8, but what I take it to mean is if you press this button or select this mode, everything in the transceiver is set up for FT8 and you simply need to connect your transceiver to your PC with the relevant bit of software. So yes, FT8 is acknowledged and ready to go. So where are we with this uh, transceiver? Well, it looks to be very, very good. Uh, they've obviously learned from the IC705 and then applied uh, Yesu technology. They've certainly copied the FTDX series 
um, in introducing various features, particularly the front end. I think we can regard the receiver front end as being really special and something that is probably uh, world beating in terms of the size of the transceiver. Bear in mind, of course, that uh, you've got a lot of a lot to pack into a small space, but I think Yesu may well have done it. And remember, of course, Yesu really started off the uh, uh, QRP uh, uh, market. They actually had something, I think it was called the FT7, a long, long time ago, which was uh, crystal controlled um, HF transceiver. And then, of course, more latterly, they bought in the uh, FT817, which had a very, very long life. They upgraded it to the FT818, where they increased the um, power limitation from 5 watts to 6 watts. Didn't really make much difference. Um, that had a shorter length, but they certainly cut their teeth on the QRP market. And a lot of, pe a lot of people in the, uh, that uh, operate QRP are um, very appreciative of the FT817 and FT81 series of transceivers. This one really is a major, major step forward. It promises to be a world-beating QRP transceiver. And of course, you've got the option of adding the 100 watt amplifier or indeed purchase, purchasing it. So we've got the FTX1 field, which is 10 watts maximum, six watts on the battery. And we've got the FT1X, sorry, the FTX1 Optima, which gives you the 100 watt amplifier with built in ATU and also includes the battery. So you're ready to go for QRP operation or for full blown 100 watt base station operation. Now, the big question is going to be when are we going to see them? Well, I'm pretty certain that this transceiver will be introduced in its finished state. Uh, Dayton, Ohio, uh, in the middle of uh, May. Uh, I think we shall see the finished version there. Whether they'll have them there on sale or not, I don't know. It's highly possible that they may well do. And it's possible that we shall hear that the shipment to the UK is um, either about to be made or on its way. Uh, my guess is we're not very many weeks away from being able to supply you with either the FTX1 field or the FTX1 Optima. So if you're interested in this transceiver, now is the time to give us a call and say you're interested, register your interest, and we will make sure you're on the list. We don't, I've covered this before, we don't take deposits because we don't want to be in a situation where we don't get enough and we've got to give deposits back and it becomes a bit, me bit messy. We'd much rather you come to us and say, look, I'm interested, I'd like to buy from you because you've been going for 50 odd years, Peter, um, and you've done a lot for ham radio, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. You may not think that way, of course. But um, we are the largest uh, purchaser of Yesu from Yesu UK. We're the largest customer now, so we will get the biggest share of the first shipment. Need I say more? So I hope this has whetted your appetite. I hope it's filled in the gaps, and uh, I think... Uh, it's going to be a very interesting transceiver. Now, as regards prices, we've just published the prices on our website for both models. So you can see for yourself the prices. I think the prices were roughly in line with what we expected, although we uh, um, didn't have any uh, prior information. And uh, now you can see the prices. You can decide if you want to purchase one. And uh, we're happy to do a part exchange deal with you. Just give us a call and we'll be happy to uh, supply. There we are. So, much appreciate you uh, watching this video, much appreciate you supporting us over many, many years now. And uh, I personally will be happy to supply you with the FTX, uh, whichever model you decide to purchase. Be interesting to see which way um, the sales go. And in the meantime, you take care, enjoy your ham radio, and hopefully, we'll be able to supply some of you with an FTX very, very soon. There we are. Take care, enjoy your ham radio. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.